Now, in terms of him getting in trouble for getting his side of the story out there through the journals, um, is uh, this something that you expected to happen? And was it worth it in light of him losing these privileges for I don't know how long? You know, Chris, we, we knew about the policy. We looked at the policy. We don't think that what we did, I did, violated the policy because it wasn't an interview with the media. It was no three-way call. It was, and these were journals that Alec had prepared during trial at our request. There was, you know, the, <clears throat> there were two options. One, turn over the entire journals or two, give excerpts. And how do you provide excerpts? And 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 so we worked with the Texas Crew Production and, and we provided limited excerpts to them. You know, did it violate the policy? I don't think so, but I'm not here to argue with the Department of Corrections. And and frankly, does a policy violate the First Amendment, the media's right to interview, you know, inmates and the inmates' rights to speak freely about their own case? I think there's a lot to be said for that. But again, you know, we got bigger fish to fry. I have said in my public statement, and I'll say it again on this television station, I have the highest respect for Director Sterling. He is doing an excellent job at the Department of Corrections. I've been in this business for 30 some odd years. I've seen a lot of bad things happen at SCDC. We have a professional director who is doing an outstanding job, and I'm not going right. to criticize him for punishing Alec for, you know, taking away some privileges, and that that's it. And, you know, I've got no complaints gotcha. about the sentence, I mean, the, the, the sanction whatsoever. And also, I mean, look, he's got high ground in this because you knew about the policy and then you prepared this version of the journal uh, while he was incarcerated. So, you know, I get where they're coming from. But look, you know, you've got bigger calculations here. Uh, turning to that, how's the appeal going? And what do you believe that is becoming apparent to you in talking to jurors? Yeah, Chris, we are, uh, you know, we're still waiting on the final transcript so we can prepare the briefs. Uh, frankly, uh, we have been uh, working very diligently interviewing jurors and the information that we have um, unearthed so far has, in, in, in my experience as a lawyer, been unprecedented. And, you know, I, I don't want to say any more about you that. Give but me I can something. Promise you you got to give me a little something. What makes it I, unprecedented? I promise Just the nature you, and quality. I promise you, you'll be hearing a lot more about it in the very near future. There, there is um, serious questions as to whether this jury um, was subject to outside influences during the case. You know where Jim Griffin is going to wind up dropping little crumbs about what he's learning? Not here on News Nation talking to his old buddy Cuomo, even with the fresh haircut. Yeah, I, you, but you know, know where he's going to do it? In his new podcast. So there have you, you heard about Jim Griffin's podcast? OK, he's doing a podcast. You know who that lady is next to him? Sarah Azari. You've seen her here on News Nation, uh, CNN. I worked with her there, worked with her here. She's great. He's great. The presumption is the podcast that they're doing. Now, what do you two believe that uh, on top of your just incredible good looks that you add to the stew? of true crime podcasts. And the, the focus of our podcast, Chris, is is how the media influences high profile cases. And, and and so we explore that. And we also explore, you know, the the, the mental illness and drug addiction that causes crime and how it's treated in, in the, um, you know, in the justice system. I mean, and we, we're very focused. I've, we've had great guests. We have, uh, you know, we've, I think we've got 12 episodes up. And so we're we're thrilled with the reception we've had and, and um, look forward to doing many, many more.